Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office for Saturday, February the 3rd, 2024. In today's urgent weather forecast, we are breaking down all the details that you need to be aware of as far as this very strong atmospheric river storm when it hits California. This could bring devastating impacts, including several inches of heavy snowfall, very strong damaging winds of over 60 to 80 miles an hour, and several feet of snowfall for the higher elevations of the Sierra with major flooding and landslides. So first things first, here's a look at the current satellite imagery as far as the storm system goes. It is organizing in a hurry. We have a baroclinic leaf. That means we have a lot of forcing for ascent on the northern quadrant of this system. So this is your baroclinic leaf, an indication that the surface flow is rapidly organizing. We are beginning to see cyclogenesis taking place with this surface low. And what we don't see underneath this is a secondary low that is located somewhere over here. And this is going to be the one that does explosively deepen and not really this one. Actually, arguably enough, these two will be fighting each other as far as deepening goes. But either way you put it, this is going to become a monster once it gets its act together tonight into tomorrow. When it hits California, this is going to be absolutely devastating. Another way to put this into perspective is look at the number of advisory and weather alerts for California. Pretty much the entire state is bathed in weather alerts at this time, including a storm warning. Yes, a storm warning along the San Mateo coast, including for Southern California. We got a high wind warning for the Sacramento Valley, including for the San Joaquin Valley with wind gusts between 65 to 70 miles an hour. Wind advisories down here. We have winter storm warnings for the Sierra. And these are not your just ordinary winter storm warnings. We could be talking snowfall amounts up to eight feet with the storm system in the highest peaks. Does not surprise me at all. We could see avalanches. We could see blizzard conditions eventually if things keep up. And then, of course, down here to the south in Southern California, we got flood watches and also high wind warnings, winter storm warnings. I mean, this has a lot of potential, folks, and that's why I am making a dedicated video just for California today. We are not going to be focusing at all on the rest of the nation since this is top priority right now. Really quickly, though, uh, for the Intermountain West here of the Rockies, there is winter storm warnings as that first system is just kind of taking its own sweet time. It's just kind of getting um, charted apart here. So there is um, some heavy snow expected for the Rockies, also for Wyoming, and also for, say, Montana. But the biggest impacts, again, really focused here on California. So when we time this out on the HRRR model, which stands for High Resolution Rapid Refresh. So this is really a good model to look at as far as the mesoscale goes of what is exactly going to happen. How much rainfall are we going to see? How strong will the winds actually get? We'll be looking at that too. So first, looking at the rainfall forecast, we can see some showers already approaching the coast, as you can see on the lower right side, some of radar returns. This is being uh, picked up pretty well on the HRRR model. And this is for 2 o'clock this afternoon. This is going to continue to move further inland. So by 8 p.m. tonight for your Saturday, yeah, pretty much everyone here is going to be looking at some light to moderate rainfall. Maybe some low elevation snow too for portions there of say the Diablo range, as well as uh, some of the hills and mountains of Southern California, likely to get some snow at first with this system. Now going forward, this is when the rainfall rates really pick up. This is one in the morning on, sa uh, on Sunday. You can see this shield of really intense rainfall. This is what we call a barrel clinic front. That's where we have the uh, warm front as well. This is where we're gonna see a dramatic increase in our winds because the winds are going to be coming out of the northeast ahead of the warm front and then shift actually out of the southeast uh, behind the warm front. So doesn't surprise me if we get some thunderstorms in here as well as this front, this shield of very intense rainfall rolls through. Not only that, the Sierra's going to be seeing some pretty heavy snowfall for Sunday morning. 
Now, going forward is when the action really gets going. We start to see more steadier, moderate to heavy rainfall, especially across the northern Sacramento Valley. You can see some low elevation snow. This is going to continue. And then by um, noon on Sunday, this is according to the HRRR model, we could have a very, very intense narrow frontal band of very heavy rainfall with rainfall rates exceeding maybe a couple of inches an hour as that swings its way through. And this is when the flood threat really, really gets exacerbated over here for Southern California. Because as you know, that system has a curly cue. By the way, you can see that barrel clinic flow around this. My gosh, this has a lot of nasty dynamics to work with. And look at how heavy this rainfall is for Southern California. As we zoom in, this is just going to sit here for a while. Some of those red colors indicating some very intense rainfall rates. And this goes all the way into the next 48 hours. So this is through Monday morning. And as you can see, it's still raining. So we're going to add even more rain than what this is actually showing. So that's why I am very concerned about Southern California right now getting some of the worst impacts as far as flooding goes. In fact, there is a rare high risk for heavy rainfall and flooding for Southern California, Santa Barbara, Santa Paula, Oxnard, Thousand Oaks, Santa Clarita, under a high risk for flooding and heavy rainfall. That's as serious as this gets. This is the highest level on the Weather Prediction Center to issue as far as flooding goes. And even in the Storm Prediction Center, if there was a high risk for severe weather, that's even the highest level of severity you can get. So on the flooding side of things, this is the highest level that they can issue for flooding in this area. This means we could see 15 plus inches of rainfall in the heaviest rain prone areas, orographic favored areas, moderate risk for Southern California, El Monte, Eaglewood, Santa Monica, Los Angeles, Glendale, Santa Clarita. Under that slight risk goes all the way down towards Santa Ana, Long Beach, Riverside, San Bernardino in Southern California. But look at this, San Luis Obispo, Atescadero, Paso Robles, if you're in Greenfield, Soledad, if you're in Carmel uh, by the sea, if you're in Monterey Bay, the Big Sur coastline, uh, Salinas, Watsonville, even look at this, for the Bay Area, a rare moderate risk is being issued there from the Weather Prediction Center. This is a very serious situation impacting a huge population area with this system. If that, if that, if you think that's bad, Santa Rosa, Elk Grove, Stockton, Modesto, Yuba City, Sacramento, Red Bluff, Redding, all the way up here, Chico, uh, Marysville, uh, under a slight risk. If you do not want to see the heaviest rainfall, you might need to go to Eureka. In a rare case, usually they see the heaviest rainfall. In this case, it's further south, Fort Bragg, Mendocino, under a marginal risk for heavy rainfall. So... In other words, this is not good. This is not good at all. And I'm telling you right now, I'm sure. I think California, if I'm not mistaken, is already under a state of emergency because of how serious this actually is. And I'm sure already there are evacuations already in progress ahead of this storm system, um, especially for Southern California. This is no joke at all. Now, when looking at the rainfall totals, this is hard to predict on high resolution models, but looking at the NAM three kilometer model, I do expect um, a couple of inches of rain across the Sacramento, San Joaquin Valley, possibly uh, in some of these higher terrain areas like the Big Sur Coast, could see 15 inches of rainfall. Uh, say the Santa Cruz Mountains might get a foot or more of rainfall, according to the, the NAM 3 kilometer. And look at this, down here in Southern California, might get perhaps 10 to 15 inches of rainfall with this storm system. Not only that, look at this, the North Bay Mountains could even get uh, five to 10 inches of rainfall. So overall, this is looking like a highly impactful event by all standards. Uh, looking at the HRRR with rainfall totals, of course, let's go all the way out in time with that. Yeah, you can see more better coverage here with rainfall totals in the Central Valley. Look at the mountains here, Southern California, really getting impacted by intense rainfall. So this is going to be a very wet system. This is also going to be a very snowy system 
Look at the snowfall totals in the higher elevations. Now, 137 inches, that's roughly between about 10 to 12 feet. I don't think we're going to see that much snow, but certainly we will see snowfall totals exceeding 6 to maybe 8 feet in the highest peaks of the Sierra, especially like if you're in Bear Valley, if you're up here near Yosemite, uh, points east and those higher peaks like Half Dome could get some very, very heavy snowfall accumulation. Also, Lake Tahoe area might get a few feet of snowfall. Yeah, I, I said that right. Maybe three or four feet of snowfall in the Lake Tahoe Basin with the western slopes getting much more snowfall because of that orographic lifting. So big time snowfall, big time rainfall, but also big time winds with the storm system. Winds are going to be making a lot of headlines along to go with the rain and heavy snowfall. That's why this is going to be such a highly impactful event for California standards. Okay, this might happen for the Northeast, okay. You get, you, or you're common to see this, right? But not for California. This portion of the world does not get a system this strong very often. And that's what makes me concerned about this. Take a look at the 18Z HRRR model. Okay, this is again is a high resolution rapid refresh, a meso model. Look at this fetch of wind gusts here along the San Mateo coast, including the Big Sur coastline. 75 to almost 90 miles an hour. I said that correctly. Between 75 to 90 miles an hour. To be specific, let's actually zoom in here. That's the, okay, 18Z run is here. Actually, let's go and look at San Francisco really quickly. So that way, at least I'm doing my job at covering this very well. You can see some of these areas, 85 mile an hour winds right in here 85 the higher elevations maybe 80 to 90 mile an hour wind gusts so yes this has the the signature of extreme wind damage potentially along the big sur coast and uh in perhaps along the san mateo coast even the central valley look at the sacramento region gusts between 60 to 70 miles an hour and that is why the National Weather Service has issued that high wind warning for a reason. They don't take this very lightly, okay? I'm not joking. It takes them a lot to issue a high wind warning. And this is the first high wind warning in over a year, by the way. We don't see those very often. And so this really, this is concerning. This really is. I'm not doing this hyperbole. This is real information that I am giving to you all. Even the NAM model, look at the wind gusts, very similar. Maybe a little lesser in the valley, but still 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts will do the trick as well. Five or 10 plus or minus, doesn't matter. Winds will reach dangerous levels across a huge population area, including for Southern California. So now looking at the surface low, now let's take a look at the 18Z GFS. I'm actually nervous at looking at that. Yeah, see, this is a little further south with the initial surface low and a little bit closer to California than what we were thinking before. So this is uh, not a good signal at all. All right, so 985 millibar system on the GFS, maybe down to 975, and that's what I'm about to show you here. 980 millibar system on the NAM 3 kilometer. This is going to shift around a little bit on exactly how deep this gets. Specific details on how deep really don't matter because winds and heavy rainfall and heavy snowfall will win out on just how low the pressure gets with the system. Looking at the HRRR, there you have it. A 975 millibar. Actually, to be specific, down here, let me kind of box this in a little bit. Right in here, 974 millibar low pressure center off the Point Reyes area, off of, say, Fort Bragg in California. That's very low. And if you think that's not bad, look at the ISO bars on this. Let's go to this. Look how tight those lines of equal pressure are. That's why we're looking at damaging winds exceeding 60 to 70 miles an hour. 
because of how tight that gradient is. And the barrel clinic ascent is going to allow that. So while this system does not look very strong at all, do not let that fool you, I repeat, okay? It is getting organized very quickly right now, and it will be a monster by tomorrow, late morning, early afternoon, once it approaches the California coast. Another thing that I did want to point out in this video is, I, again, I want to cover as much detail as I can. I don't want to forget about any of you working at the National Weather Service in Los Angeles. You do a very, very good job at making this possible. So Santa Barbara, from about 6 in the morning all the way until about Monday morning, 12 a.m., you're looking at some heavy rainfall, very heavy rainfall, actually. If you're in Los Angeles, it's going to be from 6 p.m. Sunday all the way until about, say, 6 a.m. on Monday, looking at very heavy rainfall. And you can see there, Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, rainfall totals there in some areas could exceed a foot. Okay, that's, again, pretty significant. All right, and of course, the surf is going to be very serious as well. Hazardous winds updated. You can see gusts 60 or greater. Now, not explicitly shown here. Some of the higher elevations, again, like the Diablo Range, Mount Diablo, Mount St. Helena, as well as the Santa Cruz Mounts could easily see gusts exceeding 80 or 90 miles an hour. Rainfall totals, again, and this is from the National Weather Service. You can see as much as uh, some of the mountains there, uh, it could see as much as six to almost eight inches. That's a lot. Okay. And we saw a foot on the NAM. So this could get upgraded in further updates. Okay. And then for the Sacramento region, one last look at this, you can see up to six feet across the peaks, but I mean, this could also get upgraded in later updates from the National Weather Service. The rainfall forecast is looking pretty significant here. Vacaville, two to three inches, perhaps Modesto. And then, of course, the winds, very strong. You can see 50 to 60 miles an hour across the majority of the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valley. While it does show 55 here, some of the models are indicating much stronger winds like the NAM and HRRR going for 65 to 70 miles an hour, which is even worse than what this is showing. And if you do plan to go to the mountains, please do not go. This is not the time to travel well. Today, right now, is the time to travel in the mountains. But do not do it tonight or do not even do it tomorrow. Road closures, um, significant road travel delays, whiteout conditions, blizzards are all looking likely at this point because of just how much snowfall we're looking at. And one other thing to uh, point out here, you don't see a comma-shaped storm on, the, uh, on this system for California. This is very significant by a lot of standards. So please take this seriously. Make sure you are weather aware and get prepared. That's going to do it with today's detailed weather forecast for the California region. Please stay safe, stay off roads, and stay indoors if you can this weekend. All right, share, like, and subscribe if you want more updates on this. I will be on Twitter doing more updates on this as well. If necessary, I might go live on this tonight, but for sure, I am planning to do a live stream tomorrow. Again, this is very, very significant, all right?